Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another Giants video. Kind of a different video today. One, the idea which I got off of one of my comments from yesterday and also from one of my friends we're talking to them about the undrafted free agent signings, right? So what I'm gonna get into is what happened to the undrafted free agent class from last year, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like where are they now? How did they help out the Giants? Did they even have an impact? And I guess what I'll get into right now is what is an undrafted free agent? Just because when I was talking with one of my friends, he was kind of confused about it. I'm like, maybe there's more people out there that not exactly sure what an undrafted free agent is or, you know, the impact they could have on a team. I'm just going to spend like literally like a minute on it. So undrafted free agents are um, the name in itself is kind of self explanatory. It is, you know, eligible college players that enter the draft, um, whether it's during their junior or senior year, and they unfortunately did not get drafted by any team during the seven rounds. And so for a period of time, they become essentially free agents where they, they could become or they could be picked up by any of the 32 teams in the NFL and signed to a contract. You know, they're brought in, they, uh, they work out, they speak with the coaches and whatnot, very similar process to the draft. And then they're brought on to the what is I think it's like a 75 man roster team before it's cut down to 53 and then they essentially have to battle their way up into that 53 man roster to crack the roster and undrafted free agents uh, most of the time and I can't believe I have to continue saying this when I say most of the time it doesn't mean all the time there's still people in the comments that think most means all but most of the time they usually do not crack the 53 man roster or they end up as just depth pieces there are however uh, instances where these guys come out and have an immediate impact and actually become a centerpiece of a team and, and become really a diamond in the rough, the hidden jewel that for some reason 31 other NFL teams did not see in the draft or in the undrafted free agent process. Of course, for the Giants, the most famous, ex famous example is Victor Cruz. He was an undrafted free agent wide receiver um, that we picked up that we picked up right before that 2011 season, you know, right before we went on that Super Bowl run. And he was arguably, no, he was the best receiver on that run. Still the single greatest wide receiver season in NFL history, in my opinion. But once again, most of the time, these guys end up as, you know, either not cracking the roster at all or just as good depth pieces. So last year, the Giants had a very nice undrafted free agent class. But I had one comment on my undrafted free agent video from last year. And you know, with the way YouTube works, it doesn't matter which video comments on it. As long as it's recent, they'll notify you. And it says, which one of these guys are still on the team and that worked out? And in this vid, I covered the 13 undrafted free agents that we signed and gave like the five who I thought would have the best chance of making the roster and that I had the most faith in making the roster. Now, I'll, I'll list that five first and then I'll get into the rest. But the guys I had my eyes on were Josiah Tewefa, the linebacker out of Texas, Paul Adams, the offensive tackle out of Missouri, John Hillman out of Rutgers, CJ Conrad out of Kentucky, and Jeremiah Harris out of Eastern Michigan. And I had my eyes on, on these particular guys for one main reason. Of course, there was more than one reason. I'm not going to get back into that. You could go check out that video if you want my breakdown of them. But the main reason I won, I, or at least I thought that they would make the team and that I wanted them on the team was because they filled positions of need with John Hillman. Even last year, I thought we needed a, a better backup running back, and I thought he could be a great addition to the Giants roster. I love what I saw from him in college, and I thought he would be a nice complement to Saquon's running style. With um, uh, with Paul Adams, of course, offensive tackle, no secret, we needed one last year. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think this was before we signed Mike Remmers. It might have been after. Whatever the case was, I still wanted more offensive tackles in there. I still wanted somebody to come in and give competition because we just took you know george double in the seventh round in last year's draft and well i wanted to see who could make that offensive tackle room better with a josiah Tuefa and a jeremiah harris both of them were edge rushers one of them was a defensive end in harris and Tuefa is a linebacker i wanted them to come in just because our linebacking core and our pass rush was very weak if i remember correctly Actually, he did crack the roster at one point. He was in a preseason game, from my memory. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he was a backup, you know, during that time in the season from like week three to six or three to seven, where our linebacking core was extremely thin because of all the injuries. And CJ Conrad is 
in my opinion, my biggest disappointment because I really thought he was going to make the team. I, I had complete faith in him coming on. I saw him as a nice mixture of Evan Ingram's receiving talent and uh, Rhett Ellison's blocking ability. I thought it would be a, a sure thing that CJ Conner would come in and be that next tight end for us. But to my knowledge, he never did. And so let's actually get into that. How, how did any of these, the 13 guys here, and those 13 guys are um, Paul Adams, offensive tackle, Jake Harlock, defensive back, CJ Conrad, tight end, Eric Dungy, quarterback, Jeremiah Harris, defensive end, Nate Harvey, defensive end, John Hilleman, running back, Mark McLaurin, defensive back, uh, James O'Hannigan, center, Josiah Towefa, linebacker, Jacob Thienman, defensive back, Alex Wesley, wide receiver, Reggie White, wide receiver, and I think I might have said uh, defensive end for Jake Harlock, he was actually a defensive back is what he's listed as. So on the roster, right? So Paul Adams, to my knowledge, and I like I said, it's very hard to find if he actually made the roster. But as of right now, he's not. He's on the Washington Redskins. Jay Carlock, the defensive back slash linebacker out of LIU Post. I remember this guy. People were excited for him. There was a whole preseason game dedicated to him where he showed out. And where, you know, a bunch of his families and friends, uh, they showed up. Because he went to LIU Post, which is um down in Brooklyn. It's actually literally not even an exaggeration it's across the street from the high school that i went to so he's a very you know new york city kid and all that and carlock while he had a great splash in uh preseason he made it to the practice squad but he was cut from the practice squad back in october of 2019 and now he's with the dolphins cj conrad the guy i had most of my faith and hope in and to this day i still wish would you know make it onto the team not sure how that's looking considering that our tight end room is kind of really filled without him. Uh, but it's it's also, his case is kind of a peculiar one because, you know, when you look him up right on Google, the first thing you get is, is the Wikipedia description that says he's an American football tight end who most recently played for the New York Giants. It doesn't say that he's currently on the roster. Then also when you scroll down, you got the CJ Conrad roster page on Giants.com. But you click on that and that page is actually removed, which suggests that he's not on the team. But then you got a couple of websites, one of them being Giants Wire, who said on January 3rd of this year that he was added back to their roster. So I'll be honest with you guys, it is not exactly clear as to whether or not right now, as of today, April 29th, 2020, if Conrad is on the roster or not. I'm going to lead that he's not because, but to kind of get back to the question that the viewer asked, you know, did they have an impact? <laughs> Well, CJ Conrad unfortunately did not, and I, I can't really express how disappointed I am by that. Next up is the quarterback Eric Dungy out of Syracuse, and this is somebody I don't even need to look up. I can confidently say that he's not on the roster. I'm not even sure if he made the practice squad or whatnot, but it doesn't matter. He's not on the roster right now. As a quarterback, I remember last year there was speculation that he could be a um, kind of Taysom Hill type player because of his skill set. Well, he never made the roster, and he's currently not on the roster. So there's that. Uh, then Jeremiah Harris, the defensive end, one of the guys I was high on. He was actually on injury reserve for the Giants at one point, but he was waived back on June 6th of 2019. So he's not on the team right now. And he's currently listed at NFL.com without a team. So I'm not even sure if he's in the NFL right now, which is kind of sad. I hope that guy finds, uh, you know, a team to play with somewhere. Then there's Nate Harvey. Oh my God. I know I didn't mention him in my free agency video last year, but I did give him his own video, I'm pretty sure, when we did sign him. And Nate Harvey was somebody I liked a lot because of his speed, and I thought he had a lot of upside. But once again, he did not have any type of impact on the team, even as a depth piece. And he was actually cut earlier this month on April 9th. He, the Giants waived him because he failed a physical. So Nate Harvey, another guy that I thought, and I'm sure other people did think also, would be a nice undrafted free agent sign to see. Ended up just being another one of those bodies that didn't make it. Finally, somebody that I picked to make the roster actually made it and had somewhat of an impact. John Hilleman, the backup running back. Somebody that um I still have a little bit of faith in to think that he could possibly be the Wayne Gallman replacement. He's still in the running back room, which has four guys in there right now. Saquon, Dion, Lewis, uh, Wayne Gallman, and John Hilleman in that order. But hey man, he made the roster. He did have an impact last year when Saquon went down and uh, Wayne Gallman came in. John Hillman was behind him as, you know, obviously Gallman's backup in some looks and whatnot. So you know what, for what it's worth, this is somebody that did make the roster. And I still have faith in, you know, to have an impact. Mark McLaurin out of Mississippi State also still has his Giants, you know, 
roster page on their website. So I would assume that he's still on the team. Now, did he have an impact? Not really. Our secondary last year was um wasn't the greatest. It wasn't the worst, but um it wasn't middle pack either. It was definitely between middle of the pack and worst somewhere there. As Giants fans, we all know this, so there's no need to sugarcoat it. But he didn't exactly have an impact there. Now, he is listed as a linebacker on the Giants uh, roster page. He also definitely did not have an impact on the linebacker spot. Um, now, I will say, maybe he came in and saw a few looks last year when we were uh, there was a bunch of injuries. Bart, right here on Giants.com, where you can actually check out you know, their career stats, their logs, their splits, the, how many snaps they played. There's no information available, which leads me to believe that he did not see any time, you know, playing on the field. Uh, you can judge that impact for however you wanted to, but he did make the team. I personally don't see him having much of an impact moving forward, but there's another one that undrafted free agents that cracked the roster. James O'Hagan, the center, actually did uh, make the Giants roster at one point, but he was cut um, back in August of last year. He actually played in the XFL for the DC Defenders, and right now on NFL.com, he's listed as a center for the Giants, right? He's never played any, you know, snaps for us. There's absolutely no career stats or game logs that load up when you click on those sections on the NFL's website outside the preseason. So I'm going to assume that this page is out of date. And when you look him up on Giants.com, their roster section, no results pop up. So safe to assume he's not currently on the roster. I do. I am aware because I did watch the XFL a little bit that he left. You know, he had to leave a game with a scary knee injury. So hopefully he recovered fine from that. And, you know, there's still some football left in his future. But as, as of right now, no impact on the Giants. Now we got Josiah Tuefa, the linebacker out of Texas. Now this was somebody I was I really liked um, and that I did speak about in that video. I love the motor on him. I love the attitude he had on the field. I remember those being, you know, my specific reasons for wanting him on the team. And he did actually make it to the team. He actually saw playing time once again because of the injuries we had in the linebacking core. He, he did come in and he played. Now, he did, doesn't exactly have the best stats um, on his season. He had five tackles and one forced fumble. You know, you would hope for more, but he played um, at least listed here on Giants.com in every game from week five to week 17. So started right in the middle of all of our linebacking injuries. And you know what? Considering he was an undrafted free agent, considering that, you know, he was really just a death piece. I like what he gave to the team. I'm not sure if he's going to make the roster again this year. I'm sure he'll have to fight his way back up. But we brought in we brought in some good dudes from both the draft and, free, um, you know, undrafted free agency. Hopefully he can make it again, but this was somebody I liked and he made the team. He had an impact in our time of need. I would call this not necessarily a success, but it's definitely not a failure. Now, Jacob Thienman was somebody, another player that I really didn't need to look up, kind of like the quarterback out of Syracuse, because I know for a fact he never made the Giants roster and he was never on the practice squad, but he was picked up by the 49ers after we cut him. And it's funny that I'm doing this video today because literally yesterday he was waived by the 49ers so had i done this video yesterday he would have still been a part of the team but he was waived like what time was it yesterday it just says one day ago from you know these niners uh b reporters and whatnot uh at 1 15 p.m so like as of yesterday this dude was still on the team not anymore now these last two guys we were um at least i was kind of excited for them i didn't pick them to make the team but i did want to see them you know do something because our wide receiver core was not the strongest after odell left i not gonna get into that right now i have way too many videos on that but as of right now alex wesley is on the chicago bears now this now this is another one of those uh nfl roster player pages so it could definitely be out of date but i i don't you know i'm not exactly a fan of the bears so i'm not sure about their roster moves and whatnot as far as i know he was part of the Giants organization up until like September last year when he was cut. Later on picked up by the Bears. So he didn't make the 53-man roster, that's for sure. But he was picked up by another team. You can judge the impact he had on the Giants. For me, it would be nothing really. And then there's Reggie White Jr., somebody else that I wanted to see do good things because of the hometown ties to Monmouth and because he had nice size. He was also the wide receiver that took Odell's number. And guess what, guys? He's still on the team. He's still wrist, wristed. He's still listed as a Giants player on Giants.com. So he's definitely going to come in here. And I know for a fact he's going to be fighting for a roster spot again this year. 
He did not make the roster last year. I think he was signed to the practice squad, however. So this year, he's going to be battling his way up again. I mean, he's got some tough competition, in my opinion. We'll see if he makes it. But as of right now, has not had an impact, yet he is on the team. So this was, you know, I'll admit, this was kind of a weird video, but I did want to explore it, kind of see how last year's undrafted free agent class did, and maybe even give us an idea as to how this year's undrafted free agent class can, uh, can you know, produce in the league and whatnot, because it's always good in mind. It's always good to keep in mind that these guys, you know, they're, they're fighting for their roster spots. They're fighting for a job. And so they can do great things, but we got to keep reality in mind. Sometimes they're just dead pieces. You know, I would love for, um, for example, Benjamin Victor to come on to the team and be our number three, maybe even number two wide receiver, all of that. And I'll get into that even more when I continue with the undrafted free agent videos, but this is kind of interesting idea that I had. So I hope you guys liked it. And I'm out for now. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.